Hello, welcome to the Loney Show. I'm your host, John Maloney. We may or may not have guests, but if they do come along, that's great. If not, the show must go on. As for our guest, she is from Canada. She is the CEO of Civility Expert in 1999. She's also the leading expert of civility at work, a 20-time published author, entrepreneur, thought leader, and spokesperson. And there's tons more, too. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dr. Lewana Bayer. Hi there. Hello. How's life? Life is pretty good. I'm here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, where it's kind of a rainy day today, but uh, no complaints, really. Thank you. All right. Fair enough. And have you been up too much recently? Oh, yes. It's kind of this post-COVID catch-up, right? Everybody's uh, we're a t- company, as you, as you mentioned, and so we're back to work, full force, traveling and teaching and um, workplace civility initiatives. It's very busy. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Tell me more about what you do. Um, sure, thank you. So we, uh, since 1999, we're a um, training company, and our focus is civility at work. So we call our team, which is um, about 500 affiliates in 47 countries, we call ourselves social architects. And what we do is build better workplaces. Um, you know, we want people to treat each other better at work. And so all of our training is around civility. Wow, incredible. And what, what, what inspired you to create Civility Experts? Uh, Well, I had a business partner when we started all those years ago, and I was director of operations for a hotel chain, and uh, um, hotels are about hospitality and service, and what uh, we discovered in the course of trying to do that job is that many people didn't have table manners, they didn't know how to behave at uh, business events or networking situations. They didn't know how to behave when they were a guest in in a new city. Um, They didn't know how to deal with people that look or sound different than them. You know, generally there was this lack of social IQ and, um, you know, understanding for expectations in social situations. And so at the time, my business partner, um, her name was Karen, and I quit our job um, we were both directors. She was in HR and I was in front house uh, service. We quit our job and started a company specifically to teach people. Um, some people call it soft skills, but it's really relational skills. You know, how to get by in a social world successfully. Incredible. Oh, I also heard you were an author. Yes, thank you. Um, I have 20 books now. Um, some for children, uh, most of them tied to workplace civility. There's a business etiquette series, one on social IQ. It's a um, never-ending story in terms of research and new experiences and, and uh, new situations. So there's lots of content for books. Wow. Incredible. And out of the books you've published, which one was your favorite to write? Um, y- you know, I, there's a book called The Power of One which is about uh, the power of, you know, civility in terms of one kind gesture, one kind word, one quiet moment of reflection, one good decision, one, um, you know, minute um, working through a problem. You know, we're, we live in a world where we're very fast paced and kind of keeping up um, with the Joneses. Social media causes a lot of uh, stress for people, but also chronic change and technology. And so our ability to restrain, our ability to slow down, our ability to really be deliberate about, you know, taking a moment to acknowledge someone, you know, greet them, say hello, um, send a thank you card. You know, these, these little gestures have tremendous impact on someone's day-to-day experience. And sometimes a well-timed courtesy can actually change the course of someone's life. Wow. Very nice. And what do you like about working at Civility Experts? Um, well, I, you know, I bought out my partner um, about 10 years in. We've been around, I mentioned, since 1999. But what I really like is, you know, the opportunity to support other small business, you know, there's a few men affiliates, but mostly uh, women. And uh, the, 
you know, the opportunity to support and mentor other people who are invested emotionally and financially in doing this work and building better workplaces in their home and city and country. That's really, really rewarding for me. And then seeing, you know, when you do a, a lecture or a workplace training and you can see, you know, kind of the mental light bulbs go off and people recognize that they have the power to influence workplace culture. They have the power to build positive relationships and have impact on the, the world around them. It's a really tremendous feeling to know that you can change by way of some good training material how people think. Okay, I like it. And have you, have you spoken at any other events throughout your life? Have I spoken at other events? Yeah. Oh, most certainly. I travel and teach, you know, on average, I'd say 200 days a year. So it's everything from you know, on Monday night, I'm supposed to do a business and dining etiquette session for a group of young graduates at the university here. And um, just before COVID, I was in Morocco doing presentations for corporate and university students. You know, we do online webinars. It's, you know, keynote presentations at conferences. It's, um, you know, that kind of presenting and training. That's that's the focus of my work. Incredible. And what has what was life for you growing up? Growing up, so I, I grew up in um, a smaller city um, in Saskatchewan. I had, you know, your normal kind of middle class family. Both my parents worked, but, um, you know, quite strict. You know, my mother was of that generation that, you know, you did not eat potato chips out of the bag. You took the time to put them in a bowl. Um, you know, you put on your Sunday clothes to, to dress up, to uh, behave properly in a, say, a church context. Um, you know, we were um, kind and thoughtful neighbors. We, um, you know, chores around the house and kind of general respect for people, for places and for things. You know, that's how I was raised. And so um, I had a pretty, yeah, I think a pretty normal uh, experience growing up. Um, you know, we, we didn't go without, but we learned to be grateful um, and generous and, you um, you know, really sort of appreciate uh, a simple life and uh, assume the best of other people to choose being kind over being right, those kind of things. Okay, cool, cool. What's your favorite season? Oh, I like the fall. So September, October, um, that's my favorite. Oh, okay. Would you rather be really hot or really cold? Oh, I'd rather be cold. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, the, as I get a little older, the sun is not my friend. And, you know, that kind of clammy, sweaty, that's not my thing. But I also grew up in the cold. So uh, Saskatchewan is, you know, sometimes we get minus 30, minus 40. Montreal, Canada, where I went to school, it gets very cold and windy. And Winnipeg, um, you know, last summer, I think, or last winter, rather, I think we had a stretch there five or six days where it was minus 40 or colder uh, with the wind chill. So I'm used to the cold. I don't mind it. Dang, that's cold. What website or app do you visit most often? What apps? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I uh, social media wise, I, I big follower on LinkedIn. Um, apps like, you know, I like different travel apps. Um, there's a couple of really interesting, uh, I don't know what you call it. I don't know the language, but uh, you know, TikTok, there's some really amazing um, kind of world sites around the world. And I like, you know, I like geography and history and stuff. So in my spare time, those kind of apps are, are appealing to me, but I'm not really, don't do a lot of online games and those kind of things. I like book apps and, and um, kind of boring. <laughs> but um, I guess it's just because of my, my work. I'm kind of a continuous learner. So I don't really go on apps to play around or doesn't relax me. I go on apps to learn something. All right. Fair enough. I respect that. What movie would greatly improved, would be, would be greatly improved if it was made into a musical? Oh my gosh, that's a that's an odd question. <laughs> um, a movie that if it were made into a musical, oh gosh, um, I think I, I would be wasting some 
time that it would take me, I, I can probably count on one hand the number of movies I've seen in the last 10 years, so that's a tough one. Um, I, I, I'm going to have to pass on that question. I have no idea. That's all right. Fair enough. It, it's some for a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, is, what has been the most beautiful landmark you've seen? Oh, I'm a prairie girl, so um, the kind of foothills of Saskatchewan, these rolling hills with the tall grasses and um, hills are just big enough that there's, you know, beautiful um, creeks and valleys and, and the, the prairies of Saskatchewan. Uh, I don't know if that's a landmark, but um, it's, it's like I never, ever get tired of that view. Ah, okay, great. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? You know, um, I had the privilege of uh, visiting Rwanda a few years back, and I was overwhelmed by how beautiful it is there and uh, what seemed like quite, uh, you know, the people gracious and um, I don't mean simple in a negative way, but really kind of uh, the pace. And, you know, I really, really loved it there. Um and I think I might consider that. Otherwise, um, I went to school in Montreal, and um, I would live in Montreal, Canada, in a moment. Okay, great. Where do you see yourself 20 years from now? Yeesh, 20 years from now. Well, um, I by 20 years from now, I th- what, will, what will I be? Uh, I'll be 75, 76 years old, so I hope that I'm somewhere not very stressful, um, holding a grandbaby maybe, um, or, you know, visiting with my, my daughter somewhere or taking a, a relaxing trip. Um, I guess I, I hope I'm not still traveling the world working, I hope. All right. Very ambitious. What is the best way to start the morning? The best way to start the morning? Um, well, um, there's a, a, you know, kind of an online mentor that I've been following, and he has something called the 5 a.m. club. So I think the best way to start the morning is uh, a habit I've gotten into the last uh, 12 months or so of, you know, being up at 5 o'clock in the morning, taking a few minutes to kind of contemplate the day, get some exercise in, a little bit of reading. Um, you know, I, I that first 15 minutes where you just kind of be in the world, no technology, um, not interacting with people if you can help it, and really just quiet contemplation, uh, planning the day and being grateful. I think that's the best way to start the day. Wow, incredible. What's your favorite ice cream topping? Ice cream topping? Mm -hmm. Um, Well, uh, my favorite ice cream is pistachio. And so if I could have pistachio ice cream with chocolate, um, that would be amazing. Oh, wow. That, now that would be delicious. Are you a cat person or a dog person? Oh, I'm an animal person. So um, I think just because of my uh, travel and kind of my lifestyle, I'd prob- I love them both, but I'd probably have to pick a cat just for easier, ease of maintenance. All right. Fair enough. I respect your choices. If you can make one wish right now, what would it be? Oh, I would I would wish for my daughter to have a happy and healthy, prosperous life. Um, the world's changed so much. She'll be 21 in a couple of weeks here, and it's a bit frightening in some ways, you know, maybe the outlook for that generation. And so I would grant my, I would pass my wish to her to have a healthy and uh, fruitful, uh, enjoyable life. That's nice. What is your favorite life hack? Life hack? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Um, I don't know if it, if it's a if it's a hack, but I would say, uh, you know, if you have the luxury of a of a support person, uh, for me as a CEO and busy entrepreneur uh, trying to run, you know, four branches of the business and travel, um, I wish I had, I had gotten some help um, 20 years ago. <laughs> um, it's not really a hack. I, I don't know. Um, but, but I would say, you know, it's really saved, probably added 20 years to my life, having a good support. 
Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How did you spend your last birthday? My last birthday. Seems to me, my daughter cooked dinner for me. Just a quiet evening at home, I think. You get to be my age. Every day is a celebration. <laughs> That's nice. I, I, I'm not sure if you've already told me this. I think you have. But what's the weather like where you are right now? Right now, it's a bit dreary, a little bit rainy. Um, you know, I think, what is it, 13 or 14 out? It's not, it's not too bad. A little, little drippy, though. Yep, I know that feeling. Take it from the lad who's been, who's living in the city. It's all like, it's raining every single day. Yes, no thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Would you consider yourself to be an extrovert or an introvert? I am definitely an introvert. Yep, absolutely. Me too. <laughs> what kind of art do you appreciate? Um, I like old school art, the masters, you know, old... Um, you know, I remember taking art history in university and I just couldn't get enough of, you know, the, you know, impressionists, you know, Manet, Monet, all of that old, old school art. Okay, nice. So if you would start a brand new business, what kind of business would it be? Um, well, I think because I've done a lot of um, sort of academic and training and educational work, um, uh, I would probably want to do something more tied to aesthetic, something aesthetic, a flower shop maybe, something, you know, be surrounded by um, ease and beauty. I think that's probably what I would do. Great. Excellent. What is your favorite item that you've bought this year? Um, and I can't remember the year of it, but um, I'm you know, a writer and reader I mentioned, and so... I have, um, it's, oh, it's probably 40 years old, an old version of Emily Post um, etiquette. It's kind of a kind of a reference, I would call it like the original Bible of etiquette. And, you know, um, all of that influenced me when I first started my business. I love old books. Um, so that's probably my favorite thing that I bought in the last little while. Okay, incredible. Would you rather never age physically or never age mentally? I would rather never age mentally. I like that. If you, if you control any of the four elements, such as earth, water, or fire, which one would you choose? To control? Yeah. Uh, earth, water, air, or fire? Is that, what, is that what it is? Yeah. I guess I'd want to control the air, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. <laughs> Which game show would you think you'd do best on? Oh, I like Family Feud. <laughs> I think it's nice to have a team or a little group of people to kind of play with and rely on. Okay. Yeah, great. What was the last book you've read? Um, I mean, I read a lot for work, but the last book that I've kind of read uh, cover to cover again um, is a thorough, um, Walden. I mean, there's a couple lines in there I use all the time in my training. Um, so I've read that book over and over and over. It kind of makes me feel calm. That's nice. Has, has there been any interesting people that you've met for your life? Oh, I like too many to, to count. Um, because I travel and teach, I meet somebody interesting everywhere I go. Um, and, you know, brilliant, amazing people who inspire me in different ways all of the time. Nice. Did you have any role models growing up? Um, I would say yes. You know, um, I mean, my parents, are, of course. Um, more of influences from them. My father, I think that's where I got work ethic from and kind of my love of learning. Um you know, role model my mother would have been about grace and gratitude and, you know, kind of treating people well. Yeah, and then, you know, all throughout my life, different role models for different kind of times of your life. Oh, yes, absolutely. What is your favorite quote? Um, well, I was just mentioning Thoreau, so there's a quote. Uh, he says that the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. And I love that quote because I feel like it was as true all those years ago when he wrote that book as it is now. 
and that uh, it really sums up for me kind of the simmering under the surface that I see in my day to day work, the kind of um, you know, right now, post COVID, this, uh, there's a little bit of learned helplessness, a little bit of hopelessness, a little bit of desperation for, for certain um, related to work and how people, you know, manage their life and challenges they're faced with. And, um, you know, it just reminds me of the human condition and encourages me again to, you know, assume the best of people and, um, you know, be, be fair and reasonable in my expectations of others. Yeah, absolutely. What, what, ha, what has been something you've learned this week? Something I've learned this week? Yeah. Um, well, I've been doing uh, some research for, for a project and I, uh, you know, spend quite a bit of time on uh, lately about bias and unconscious bias. And um, I've been learning about a tool called the, the bias codex and, knowing that there's about uh, 180 biases, 50 or 60 or so that are active, uh, no matter what we're doing, where we are, what country we, we live in, what language we speak, male, female, old, young, these biases and kind of tied to the way we think and our survival instinct. And uh, I've, I just found it fascinating and I haven't been able to let it go. I, I think I'll be doing some continued learning on that topic. Hmm. Okay, nice. If you could travel back in time, what decade would you want to live in? Oh, the boring. I is it the the twenties? That kind of um, um, I'm trying to think of that movie Leonardo DiCaprio, but all that that roaring twenties, all the sparkle and it seemed like such an amazing dancing and the everything so beautiful and laid out. Um, you know, wonderful courtesies and the art and yeah those were the days yeah 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 for sure absolutely out of all the places you traveled to where was your favorite place to travel um well i really really loved morocco it was unexpected um i'm sorry rwanda and then i had was able to go to morocco and in both cases i was initially fearful i had heard you know, different stories about what it would be like. And I was overwhelmed um, by how uh, amazing and safe and beautiful both of those countries were and the people that I met. And um, I think I would I would probably go back to Rwanda first if I had a chance. And um, I, of course, I'd visit Morocco anytime too. And there's lots of countries I'd, I'd like to see. I, you know, I spent some time in in the uh, UK, but didn't have occasion to travel around as much as I'd like. And um, I, I think that um, any opportunity, whether it's, you know, an hour from home in any direction, any opportunity to explore, I think really expands our minds and um, creates learning opportunities. And so I, I would travel constantly if I could, but it would be nice to have a little travel for fun, not just for work. Yeah, absolutely. What is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Oh, pistachio. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, of course. If you could erase one past experience, what would it be? If I could erase? Yeah, one past experience. That's a tough one. You know, I've had you know some health issues, and I could probably go without uh, some of those experiences. I've had, uh, you know, in my life, as everybody has, a couple of really challenging or toxic relationships. And although I know that they kind of make you who you are, and, you know, I could probably do without <laughs> a couple of those if I could unwind or redo. Yeah, absolutely. And have you ever saved either a person or animal's life? Save their life? Yeah, if you, have you saved anyone's life, like a person or an animal? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Um, no, I mean, I was present uh, at one point when my, uh, my husband did save somebody who was ready to kind of leap off of a bridge. I was present, but he did all the, all the hard work and literal heavy lifting in that case. Um, and it, it was, you know, terrifying and humbling experience, but um, he actually yeah, I was just present. 
Absolutely. And that is all we have for this episode. It was great having you here, Luana, talking about civility experts and your life in Canada and wow, a lot of a lot of other things. It's been great. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I appreciate your time. And yours too. And until next time, stay tuned for more. <laughs>